Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. This tip today is going to be specifically targeted to people who don't have a lot of wrist flexion. So your wrist doesn't bend back and it creates a lot of pain because there's a lot of compression right there on bone on bone. And you need just a little bit more extension of your hand, especially like in downward facing dog. Um, and it's also really nice too if you have sensitive knees and you're always putting padding underneath, this is going to give you padding underneath as well. So it's like a two for one that's going to have your practice being a little bit better on your body, especially on your bones. So I have an extra yoga mat. You might have an extra yoga mat. Maybe you don't. I go through them pretty fast. But you can take the extra yoga mat and it doesn't want to be super thick. Like I have a really nice big thick one. This is a little bit thinner than that. And I'm going to fold it in half. And once I fold it in half, I'm going to turn it so that the two ends that are meeting together are going to be toward the back of my mat. So whatever the back of my mat would be. And then the other side is going to be up front. And then I'm going to take that front side again, that rolled side, and just fold it over again. And then once I've done that, I'm going to take my mat. I'm going to figure out where, when I come into downward facing dog, where my hands would be in my mat, right? So take a moment or two, find a downward dog, and then just kind of realize where your hands would be. And then you would want to roll this first mat back so that it gives you space to place this other mat underneath. So then you're going to place that mat on top. And then you're going to roll that back out. And then as you do, you want to make sure that wherever you're downward, when you do downward facing dog each time, that that roll is going to be right there. So you have a little bit of a cushion. And you can adjust it forward. So I just know that I'm a little bit more forward of that. And so that then when you come into downward dog, you have your wrists. Your wrists are going to be your heel of your hand, right? This heel of your hand is going to be right in the front of that roll. So then your fingers have a space to go down. So if you notice, when I'm here, I have less of an um, of extension or sorry, flexion of my wrist here than if I do when I'm here, right? So over the top, this is 90 degrees. There's a lot of compression there. And now that I'm here in plank, it's a little bit more open. And then when I go to downward facing dog, it just gives me a little bit more. I can still press in with my fingers. I can still press down with my hands to lift back into downward dog. But then I also have a little bit of padding under my knees for when we do knee work, which is kind of nice because the end of that mat is still under my knees. And you may need to adjust it and play with the width a little bit more. Maybe you need another roll under there so you roll it again. So you would take it and maybe you roll it forward a little bit and then you have a little higher arch for that, right? So you have that to play around with. Maybe it feels even good to keep your whole hand on it and just your fingertips off. So kind of play with it. That might help your wrist a little bit. Other things to do before you even start a yoga class or if you're waiting for it to begin is just to do little wrist circles with your hands to help loosen those up a little bit, to help you find a little bit more range of motion. But sometimes it's just bone on bone and you can't do much with that. So hopefully that helps you. Let me know how it goes in the comments below. Drink lots of water, eat your veggies, wear some sunblock. We'll see you next time. Namaste.